folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. And today we're going to be taking a look at this little guy right over here, Ticket to Ride Amsterdam. So let's get to the table. So here I have a four player game of Ticket to Ride Amsterdam set up for you. Now, what I'm going to do here, first of all, is if you already know how to play Ticket to Ride, the rules and basic mechanisms are the same. So I'm going to start off by, first of all, telling you the nuance. Then I'll have an, a complete section about what you do to set up the game, uh, how you play the game, and all of that kind of stuff after that. So the nuance that Ticket to Ride Amsterdam brings with it are these merchant bonus cards. And these bonus cards are basically kind of like a, a set collection aspect where everybody's racing to get as many of these as they possibly can. And then at the end of the game, you're going to get some bonus points based on how many of these you have and in what place you land in that race. So, uh, for example, in a four player game, if you get uh, first place, you get eight points, second place gets six points, third place gets four points and uh, fourth place gets two points. Uh, in a three-player game, it's eight, five, and two. So you kind of get the idea. You're trying to get these merchant bonus cards, uh, but the way you get that is by completing routes that have these little uh, carts on them. So as you can see here, some of the routes have kind of like a an overlay of a white cart on them. When you finish one of those routes, then you can take one merchant card and add it to your tableau face up so that everybody can continue to see how many of these cards you have throughout the course of the game. Doesn't matter how long the route is, you always only gather one merchant bonus tile card, and then you'll score those points based on your place in that race at the end of the game. And that's it for the nuance that Amsterdam brings with it. If you want to skip to the end to my final thoughts, you can go ahead and do that or Stick around. Now, if you've never learned how to play Ticket to Ride, I've got your back. First thing is you have to set up the game. You're going to take your transportation cards here that have these backs that have different colors on them. Shuffle this deck up, and then you're going to deal two cards to each player, and that's going to constitute their starting hand. Then you're going to turn over five cards to represent the draw pool that you can pull from, and then set that deck right next to it. Then you're going to take the contract cards and you're going to also deal two randomly out to each player so that they can now look at them and choose how many of them they're going to take. The people have to keep at least one of those cards, but they can keep both of them if they want to. You'll put the remainder of those contract cards down here in a pile and then you'll also set the merchant bonus cards out next to the board. Everybody takes their own set of uh, 16 cards that you're going to have denoted by their different colors. And once you've done that, you're pretty much ready to begin. Now the point of the game is to complete as many of your contract cards as you possibly can by using your transportation cards uh, to complete the routes that are on the board that will connect the places or the uh, communities, districts in Amsterdam so that you can complete the contract cards that you have in your hand. So on your turn, you can carry out one action from three different choices. So the first option that you have to choose from on your turn is to draw new destination cards. Now, you get to draw two cards um, with a caveat being that if you draw a face-up wild card, that's the only card you can draw on that turn. But generally speaking, you can draw two cards. You can either draw two off the top of the deck, you can take two face up cards, or you can take one face up card and one from the top of the deck. It's really whatever you would like to do. Uh, whenever a card is taken from the set, then a brand new card is taken to fill its spot. And then you can choose a second card. But since these two are face-up wild cards, that second card cannot be to take one of these two. You would be stuck with taking one of these three or another one from the top of the deck. The second option that you have on your turn is to claim a route out here on the board. And you do that by playing cards, destination cards, out of your hand to equal the number and color of the route that you want to claim. 
So if I play two cards out here, a wild and a black, that means that I have two black destination cards here. I can claim this route right here by simply placing two of my cards out here, and now I've completed the route between this district and that district. These are put into a discard pile, and that would be the end of my turn. Now, Amsterdam has a caveat here that they have some of these routes that have gray cards on them, and whenever you complete one of those routes, you're able to draw one of these merchant cards. And these merchant cards will give you bonus points at the end of the game based on how many of them you are able to get. And the third option you have for your turn is to draw more uh, contract cards. Now, when you draw more contract cards, that probably indicates that you finished the ones that you have or that you're close to finishing it. Uh, but you'll draw two cards and then you must keep one of them, but you would be able to keep both if you perchance were savvy enough to have already connected both, or you think you can do it before the game ends. And if you only choose to keep one, you discard the other one at the bottom of the deck. When one player has two or fewer cards left in their uh, supply, that's going to trigger the end of the game. At that point, that player and everybody else will get one more turn, and then the game will immediately end. At the end of the game, you're going to tabulate how many points everybody has, unless you were savvy enough to take care of that throughout the course of the game. And then you're also going to uh, calculate how many points everybody gets for their finished contract cards. You would also, at that point, take into account negative points for incomplete contract cards. And you'll also divvy out points based upon how many merchant cards everybody was able to pick up for finishing these special routes here. And then whoever has the most points at the end of all of that tabulation is the winner. In case of a tie, the person who finished the most contracts is the winner. If there's still a tie, they will share a happy victory. So that's about that for Ticket to Ride Amsterdam. Now, I am somewhat of a Ticket to Ride connoisseur myself. As you can see here, I do have, uh, I wouldn't say extensive, but it's definitely not a singular collection of Ticket to Ride copies. Um, and I've tried to spread it out a little bit to things that I enjoy. But even with Ticket to Ride Amsterdam and these smaller quicker versions. I also have uh, three different copies of that as well. Now, as I kind of alluded to at the beginning of the, the review, each of these has a little bit of a nuance in it that makes it play just a little bit differently than the others. So this isn't, while it looks like I have the same game, it really isn't. They do play differently, but the cool thing about it is they all have the same basic mechanisms. So if you learn how to play one, you know how to play all three of them, with the exception of that one little nuance or that one little caveat rule that might be in it. So with that having been said, you kind of probably can glean where this review is going to go. I actually really do enjoy Ticket to Ride. The mother game, I guess you could call it, that, that these little babies have come from, uh, is longer in duration than these are um, by a by long, long shot. shot. That's one of the things, one of the main criticisms that I've had with, for example, parents that I've talked to that play the game with their kids is that it just goes on and on and on. And on. These guys, the box says 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, eh, I wouldn't go that far. I would say that you're going to bank on about 30 minutes per game with these Ticket to Ride games. Now, I will say this. It will definitely seem much, 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 much shorter than you think it's going to be. You will have games with this where you're like, uh, the game's almost over. Um, I'm not even close to completing everything I want to complete. <laughs> you know, you'll have those moments. Suffice it to say that I enjoy playing Ticket to Ride. It, it is one of those games that has just really kind of latched on to me. It's, it's found a niche in my collection, and it's a game that I know that I can mention, and probably people have heard of it, especially by now. This is a game that if you don't have 
a Ticket to Ride game in your collection, even if you don't like it, you probably should go pick it up. Because this is a game that you can introduce to, uh, to, to newer players or people who are just getting into the hobby. And if they haven't already played it, they'll probably enjoy it. So I'm not going to talk anymore about the bigger game of Ticket to Ride. That's just not why I'm here. I'm talking about this one right here. Um, and I guess I'm going to kind of allude to my likes of this series, this version of Ticket to Ride. First of all, I love how fast it plays compared to its predecessor. I really think that this is the way, the best way, I'll put it that way, to play Ticket to Ride is with one of these smaller versions of the game. Now, if you really, really, really enjoy Ticket to Ride, you're going to disagree with me, and that's absolutely fine. But for me personally, and from conversations that I've had with other people, they really enjoy these better than the bigger game because they just simply play faster. It's over faster. Now, as far as the little nuance rule that this, that Amsterdam brought into it, I liked the set collection merchant cards. Those, this was a cool thing. And that kind of structured how I played the game. Uh, the last time my wife and I played, um, we, I saw that she was going for merchant cards, merchant cards, merchant cards, merchant cards. So I was like, okay, she chose routes that were up there. Um, that kind of helped me structure. Okay, I know she's going heavy on the merchant cards. She's going to get that eight bonus points at the end of the game fine and dandy let's try to do something else let's focus on building larger routes or let's focus on uh, getting the larger contracts those kinds of things with the San Francisco one you're collecting uh, tourist tokens and how many tourist tokens you get uh, determines how many bonus points you get at the end of the game uh, with the London one you're it's, it's almost like an area control thing because if you control the most routes into a city or, or uh, in a district then you're gonna get the, you're gonna score those district points uh, so there's little differences like that, but I really enjoyed this one because it was a simple one, but it still kind of structured my strategy for the game. The artwork and graphic presentation of the game is stellar. Um, one of the cool things that I like about this series is that they all kind of have their own little look and feel about them. Uh, and, and I like it when games do that because even though I'm playing Amsterdam now, I might pick up San Francisco or London later and play one of those and it will feel and look like I'm playing a different game because while everything is very similar, everything is also distinct um, in its own city, its own uh, thing. Here with Amsterdam, you're, you're using, you have these little carts because it's 17th century. Um, with San Francisco, they're little trolley cars. Uh, in Ticket to Ride London, uh, they are the little double-decker buses, the little pieces that you have. And those little, almost infinitesimal tweaks, that's where the cool factor lies for somebody like me, because it, it you're playing the same game, but it has a different feel. So finally, I'm gonna give this one two thumbs up because this is something that I think you should go out and buy. Even if you don't have any other Ticket to Ride games, these are standalone Ticket to Ride games that play up from two to four players. So I really, really enjoy uh, these smaller versions of Ticket to Ride. That's why Amsterdam and London and San Francisco get my two thumbs up. So that's about it for Ticket to Ride Amsterdam. Thanks for joining me. I certainly appreciate it. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care.